In this video, we are going to continue working on the Edit Connect page. Okay. So we had this, uh, these fields displayed, but one of the things that the Edit Connect page needs to do is to display the contact information. So we're going to work on that first in this video. Let's review. We added uh, the phone and address fields in the Connect class. So now we go to the Connect repository. Maybe we should you know, initialize them. Maybe we don't have to, right? We don't have to initialize them. So let's uh, review that we do have this get contact by ID method already. So this will help us to pull the information, right? And then let's go to the edit contact page and let's review that we already have this uh, parameter that is passed in. Right, and this property receive the ID parameter from the URL and that retrieve uh, the contact object from our repository. And here we're supposed to assign the information of the contact to our views. Right here we have this, these entries. Uh, later we're going to use data binding, but for now we're just going to use name. Right, we're using the event driven approach first and then followed by MVVM. So now we're going to use uh, names to reference. So here, this is this is entry name and this one would be entry email, phone number, last but not least, address. Okay, so let's go to the code behind and let's assign those values over here. So entry name dot text equal to well first of all this get contact by id method may return nothing right if um the id is incorrect that shouldn't happen but just to be safe uh, we are going to say if contact is not now then we are going to assign values uh, to these views right so this is name and then we have entry dot address tx text equals contact dot address email phone all right so we have all four fields in here while we are here we're gonna put this cancel button back okay so let's go to the front end also put our cancel button at the bottom okay and let's delete the original stack layout Let's put it over here at the bottom and let's run the application to see whether we can see the information of the contact. Oh, okay, it's running. So let's go to one of the contact. Now you can see it's pulling the information in. We can see the name. We can see the email. We don't have the phone number and we don't have the address. Let's click on the cancel button to make sure that we can go back to our contacts page. All right, let's go to another one make sure it's pulling the correct information all the time right all right it's doing pretty good right. we're gonna try all of our contacts and this time it's Jane Doe so that's pretty good so that's pretty good now we should work on our updates for that let's go to our repository first and let's create a update method again it's going to be a static method and it's going to be a void function and i'm going to call it update contact and first of all we're going to have the id to specify which contact we want to update and then we're going to pass in the the information that contains the information that needs to be used to update existing records all right so first of all we will need to make sure that the id that is passed in is the same as the ID is in the contact object, right? So if they're not the same, I'm just I'm just going to return, right? And at this point, they're the same. So because we're using an in-memory database, so we may encounter a problem here, but we will try to fix that problem when we encounter that. For now, let's just code normally, right? So what are we going to do? We are going to um, use the get contact by ID, right? First of all, we're going to get our target contact to be updated, right? So contact to update 
equals get contact by ID and we just provide the ID here and uh, we need to make sure that the contact is in the data store right so if it's not now then we start updating eventually when we use a database for example we're not going to do this but for now we will need to update the fields manually of course we're not going to update the id but we are going to update all of the other uh, fields so we have email name and phone number if you want to use automapper for example you can use that but i think we don't have a lot of fields so i'm just uh, manually populating them again if you're interested you can check out auto mapper right but i'm not going to use auto mapper in this course so now we have the update contact method right and let's go back to our front end and we need to add a button and that button is going to be the contact button right do we have a spacing here we do have 10 spacing so that's pretty good we don't have to adjust positioning so this is going to be called btn update and of course the text is going to be update and we're gonna generate a new event handler here by doing this right and let's just click right click on it and then go to field and then we can see we have our new method here so this is the event handler and here we can use the contact repository to do the update right we have the update method already remember we are not using data binding so we will need to get information from each one of these fields right so what should we do uh, we can say contact remember we have a contact already right defined over here and it's populated with the contact id method the setter the contact id property right with the setter here so we can say the contact dot name equals uh, entry name dot text contact dot address equals entry address dot text so one of the reasons to use mvvm is to eliminate the process of auto, uh, manually populating the views right that's one of the reasons uh, imagine you have a lot of fields and you have to do this many many times that's that's definitely a pain okay so i have all of the fields populated now i can say contact dot contact id right and then here i'm just passing in the contact object okay so after i update the contact what do i do of course I'm going to just navigate back to the previous page, which is the contacts page. So that's the same effect of clicking on the cancel button. Okay. So let's give it a try and see whether it works or not. All right. So let's go to any of the contact and let's, for example, add a phone number. Just putting a random number here. And then I'm going to click on the update button. But before I do that, let's go to the contact repository and then let's set a breakpoint here. All right? I'm expecting a problem, but let's see whether we have that problem or not. Okay, so I have the contact ID 4, which is correct. All right? And then I have the phone number in here. But let's take a look at this contact object and let's find the last one which is number four right and you can see that there is already a phone number you don't even need to update why is that like i mentioned just now this is a in-memory data store and when we call the get contact by id we're returning the object inside this list so basically this reference is returned back so therefore, when we are um, in the added contact page, when we when we handle the update event, we already updated that object in the list directly. Then we don't even need to do the update here because it's already updated. So that is incorrect because in the actual data store, we don't return a reference of the object in the 
in the server, right? So, so for example, if there's a SQL server, there is an instance of the server that is running. That's true, but we don't return that. We return a copy of that value, right? So therefore, we will have to stop debugging and we have to fix the problem. So how do we fix that problem? We have to uh, return a copy here. So this is the contact that we found, right? And uh, we are going to say if contact is not now, then we're going to make a copy, right? We're going to make a copy of the contact. If the contact is now, then of course we're just returning now here. Okay. And also, most importantly, uh, the contact ID has to be populated as well. Okay. So we fixed this problem here. But remember that we actually use the get contact ID, get contact by ID method down in here. And then we are updating this contact to update. But however, because we create a copy of the contact, so we cannot use the get contact by ID anymore because this is a copy. We, our intention is to actually update the object in the list, right? In which list? In this list. So, uh, what we can do is we can actually just copy this, right? We use lambda expression to actually find the, uh, the the contact to update. So we change this variable to contact to update and change this variable to contact to update. And then we close our if statement and then we put our uh, logic inside this particular if statement. Okay. So you can see that we use, we directly looks for the contact object whose ID is the same as the ID that is passed in. And then we, if we can find the contact to update object, then we update it. So this time it should fix our problem. And then let's run the application again. Okay, let's choose one of them. For example, if I choose myself, and then let's actually make a change in the email as well. So I'm gonna put a dot between Frank and Liu. So instead of Frank Liu, it becomes Frank dot Liu. And then I'm just going to put a, a random phone number here. If I click on the update button, it's going to take me to the contact list, right? Let's uh, set a breakpoint. Do set a breakpoint and make sure that everything is updated properly, right? So let's go over here. Uh, we have the contact ID that is passed in and we are able to find the contact to update. And then we are updating them, uh, updating the uh, the information. So let's actually look into our uh, list and let's see that you see that email is updated and the phone number is populated. All right. So let's continue. And remember that we provided, uh, we we changed our email address. We added a dot in here. So let's continue and watch. All right now you can see that this Frank Liu at email address did not change, right? But watch carefully. If I click on this um, contact list item again, going back over here, you can see that the dot is here, right? The dot is here. Click on the cancel button, go back, dot is gone. So that's a problem. And we are going to work on fixing that problem in the next video.